Mankind seems to be at a crossroads in history, from the environment, the economy, to human and animal rights. If we don't make some huge changes in the way that we are operating as a species, we just might not be around much longer. The drug war is just one piece of this puzzle, but it is crucial because of its tentacles reaching into almost every layer of sickness that mankind has created, and it has led the charge in the dumbing down of America. The economic effect of more than 10 million American adults who can't buy cars, houses, furniture, appliances, or other durable goods is like 9-11, Katrina, and every other disaster combined. If you've got a non-violent drug offender, particularly if they're kids, effectively kids, even if they're tried as adults, even if they're 18, 19, 20, that the worst thing we can do is to lock them up for a long period of time without any education, if they're functionally illiterate, without any skills or training where they can get a real profession. They're now convicted felons. We release them. Now they're 25, 26. They're out on the streets, can't be hired by anybody. What are they going to do? They're going to go back to dealing drugs. Only now they probably become more locked into a life of crime because of their stay in a prison. Nobody wants a society of drug addicts, but once you realize that a partnership for a drug-free America has been financed by alcohol, tobacco, and pharmaceutical, and is now being financed by big oil and health insurance companies, you see that the drug war is about deciding which drugs get to enjoy a legal status. Remember, almost a million Americans die every year from drugs our government deems illegal. Money controls this whole movement. You have a group called the Partnership for a Drug-Free America. Well, first of all, of course, we don't have a drug-free America, never have, never will. But who are the funders? Who are the main funders, source of funding for the Partnership for a Drug-Free America, of all things? The tobacco industry and the alcohol industry. They are drugs. They are mind-altering, sometimes addicting drug, drug-free America indeed. But why do they do that? They spend huge money to reinforce the distinction between legal drugs on the one hand and illegal drugs on the other. Since the inception of this modern day drug war in 1971, American law enforcement has arrested 38 million people for nonviolent drug offenses, nearly 2 million last year alone. The number of people jailed for crimes has risen 300%, but the prison population of nonviolent drug offenders has soared to over 2,500%. At this very moment, over two million children are orphans of the drug war who will most likely not attend school and end up in jails themselves. The reason? Get tough, mandatory minimum sentences for drug-related crimes. Our government has such a low opinion of you that they would rather just step in, turn you into a slave, and make orphans out of your children instead of offering rehabilitation. I've had two sitting congressmen tell me this. Jim, you're right. Most people in Washington realize that the war on drugs is not winnable, but it's eminently fundable. Our problem isn't that we use too many drugs. Our problem is we've got too much money. I'm afraid of Americans. I'm afraid of the world. I'm afraid I can't help it. I'm afraid I can't. America. People have to realize that most of our history, we didn't have federal laws against the use of drugs. This notion that we somehow have to uh, either approve or criminalize all human activity is, as I said, a great misunderstanding of what's needed for, for a government in which people are free to do as, as they wish, uh, unless they are damaging somebody else, or unless, in rare cases, you believe that they are so out of uh, control that they can't be trusted to make their own judgment. The fact is, we now have two million people who are locked up. We have by far the largest prison population of, per capita of, of any place on earth. During his campaign, Obama promised to take a new approach to how our country fights drugs and we must demand he does so. At least he has the guts to admit that he tried various drugs during his college years. Imagine if Obama had gone to prison over a minor possession charge. Sound ridiculous? Now imagine the hundreds of thousands of hardworking, well-educated, patriotic Americans who simply got caught holding the bag and lost everything they had, including their freedom. 
Many of these people are vets returning from war who started using drugs in an attempt to manage post-traumatic stress syndrome. Some of the most creative people throughout our history have used illegal drugs. Imagine right now if the future Einstein, Tesla, or Da Vinci was sitting in a jail cell instead of solving our energy, economic, environmental crisis. But war is big business with massive profit margins for corporations that thrive on human misery. Just like Halliburton and Bechtel have made out like bandits from the destruction of Iraq, the private prisons and the throngs of drug war related forces only benefit from the continuing drug epidemics that they themselves manufacture at the cost of our own country's future. It is time to fix our planet and to fix ourselves. And when we do so, less people will have the desire to escape reality. Because reality does not have to include locking people in cages because they want to escape reality. Thank you.